Hello, everyone. Welcome to join this session uh, about introduction and project updates of provider OpenStack. My name is Ling Xiankong from Catalyst Cloud. Together with me today is Anusha Ramnani from NEC, and we are both maintainers of provider OpenStack. In this session, we would first talk about some overview of provider OpenStack. And um, then we will go through its components and uh, their features, their design, and uh, their updates. And finally, we will give you some information about how to get involved. Maybe some of you have already heard of OpenStack, which is an open source cloud computing platform. Uh, actually, before Kubernetes was born, OpenStack was one of the most active open source project in the world. And then Kubernetes just came from behind. So some people may say they are competitors. But from my perspective, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that one is replacement for the other. Uh, actually, the two uh, can, can be both uh, capable of working in tandem in order to bring great values to organizations and better service to the users. So actually, they are friends. And uh, most importantly, they are both open source. Cloud provider OpenStack was created as a sub project of Seek Cloud Provider. The responsibility of Seek Cloud Provider is to establish standards and the requirements that should be met by all, by all the cloud providers to ensure their integration with, with um, Kubernetes. So basically, provider OpenStack is just like provider AWS, provider GCP, or provider Azure if you are more familiar with those public clouds. So they are at a same layer. So there are actually um, a bunch of components in provider OpenStack in order to implement some Kubernetes resources and uh, functions. So here is a list of all the components in provider OpenStack. Uh, the two important ones are OpenStack Cloud Controller Manager and uh, the CSI plugins. Other than those, we also have Octavia Ingress Controller, uh, which uh, is implementing the Ingress resource in Kubernetes. And we have Magnum Auto Healer to achieve high availability of the cluster nodes. In security area, we have Keystone Auth webhook for RBIC and we have Barbican KMS plugin for the secret data encryption. And we will go through them one by one shortly. So here is a diagram showing that um, the Kubernetes resource and functions, um, each provider OpenStack component has implemented. And um, the interaction between each component and OpenStack services. Actually, OpenStack has lots of uh, projects, lots of services. And you can see here, uh, some service is required by, uh, by some particular provider OpenStack component. For example, Magnum, the Kubernetes as a service in OpenStack is required uh, for the Magnum auto healer implementation. And uh, another one is Octavia which is a load balancer as a service in OpenStack is required by multiple components um, by the OpenStack con Cloud Controller Manager and um, Octavia Ingress Controller. Because as you know that uh, in Kubernetes, the service of load balancer type and uh, Ingress both needs to create the external cloud load balancers. Uh, the release of provider OpenStack is actually in the same cadence of Kubernetes. For example, Kubernetes v1.22 was released uh, several weeks ago, and uh, we just released the same version of cloud provider OpenStack days after. In addition, we have CI jobs running that could make sure that one version of OpenStack Cloud Controller Manager can talk to different 
I mean, the latest three minor versions of Kubernetes. But we are not following the patch release as Kubernetes. We only do patch release as required, uh, especially when, when there is some critical bug fix we, we need to backport. So basically, uh, we have different minor, uh, we, sorry, we have different patch versions with Kubernetes. <clears throat> Uh, in terms of artifacts, uh, each time when we do release for uh, provider OpenStack, we will create and upload binary files to our release page. Meanwhile, we build and uh, upload the Docker images for each component to a Docker Hub. And both binary files and uh, Docker images support multiple platforms such as AMD64 or ARM64, et cetera. And we also provide manifest examples in our repo, uh, which could uh, make it very easy for the user who wanna deploy and test our components. If you prefer deploying those components using Helm, we also have Helm charts in GitHub. Uh, most importantly, our, in our CI job, we are using the Docker images uh, created um, in Docker Hub and uh, the manifest uh, example files in our repo to make sure that the, they can be working as expected. Okay, so the first and uh, foremost, I wanna introduce OpenStack Cloud Controller Manager. As you know, the Cloud Controller Manager is just a special controller manager but talks to the Cloud API for the cloud specific functions. The OpenStack Cloud Controller Manager talks to Octavia, which is a load balancer as a service in OpenStack in order to create the service of load balancer type in Kubernetes. So if you are familiar with OpenStack, you must know that several years ago in OpenStack networking service called Neutron, there was a plugin called Neutron Airbus that could provide some simple load balancer functions. However, Neutron Airbus has been deprecated, uh, I think two or three years ago uh, as a, in order to promote Octavia in, in OpenStack community. As a result, uh, OpenStack Cloud Controller Manager has also stopped uh, support for Neutron Airbus. So if your cloud provider are still running Neutron Airbus, I think they need, to, they need to upgrade in order to use the latest versions of, uh, of OpenStack Cloud Controller Manager. Uh, we uh, also support to create a TLS terminated service uh, with Barbican, which is the OpenStack key manager service. At the moment, there are still some known issues. Um, for example, we still don't support local external traffic policy, um, which is uh, looking for the port locally on a node. Um, uh, to avoid uh, you know, extra uh, traffic hop within the cluster network. I think this feature is supported by most of the public clouds and um, we are still uh, working on that. <clears throat> Another issue is uh, an if an application in, inside the cluster want to talk to uh, the external load balancer with proxy protocol enabled, the request will fail because um, the kube proxy is too smart. The traffic just bypassed the external load balancer and go directly to the service backend ports, uh, which obviously uh, don't support proxy protocol. So we have a um, we have an ugly workaround for that. Uh, but I know that someone is working on that in Kubernetes community, and hopefully we will have a. Uh, a available bug fix uh, soon. Another issue uh, is we have limited annotation support when updating the service. Uh, so we will uh, keep working on those issues in the upstream. And here are some uh, updates from our latest releases. As mentioned, we added Helm chart support for uh, Cloud Controller Manager and our CSI plugins. 
and, uh, and also we, we we added support for TLS termination with um, with the Barbican with the key manager service deployed, and also metric support for monitoring purposes. Another improvement we've made uh, in the past releases is to use a one single API call uh, to create the load balancer, which significantly decreased the service creation time. And the last but not the least, we added um, the Octavia version check uh, for some advanced features, because we know that um, uh, there are some cloud providers are still running different versions of uh, Octavia and even different versions of OpenStack. So we added this feature to make sure that uh, the OpenStack Cloud Controller Manager won't break when talking to different versions of, of Octavia, especially for some advanced features. And uh, we have something planned. Uh, for example, in the next release, we are going to implement a feature that will reuse a single uh, cloud load balancer for multiple services. Uh, which brings a cost-effective solution for the cluster users. And also we need to stabilize our CI to make our contributors' life easier. So move on to Octavia Ingress Controller. Well, the Ingress Controller is responsible for the reconciliation for the Ingress resource in, in Kubernetes cluster. Similar to OpenStack Cloud Controller Manager, Octavia Ingress Controller is also communicating with Octavia in order to create load balancers. And um, the same, uh, we also support TLS termination with Barbican, which is a key manager service in OpenStack. So um, <clears throat> it's very uh, similar to, to the OpenStack Cloud Controller Manager. Uh, so basically the job of Octavia Ingress Controller is very simple. It's just, um, it's just um, maintaining um, the mapping relationship uh, from the ingress definition to the dependency to the resource dependencies in the cloud to make sure that it, when there is change changes in the ingress definition and we will update the resource dependencies in, in the cloud. Magnum Auto Healer. Magnum is uh, Kubernetes as a service in OpenStack. So it provides a uh, cloud API to create, update, and uh, delete the Kubernetes cluster. And uh, additionally, it provides advanced features such as uh, the cluster certificate rotation and the cluster rolling upgrade and uh, the cluster node resize. So it's very useful. <clears throat> Uh, the Magnum Auto Healer was initially designed for Magnum, but after that, we changed the architecture in order to support multiple uh, cloud providers. So in Magnum Auto Healer, we have a health checker and a cloud provider. Uh, both are pluggable. Uh, so if, um, which means if you are the cloud administrator or the cluster administrator is very easy to customize the health check by integrating with your own monitoring solutions. And also if you are a cloud provider, it's very easy to implement some API, some interface in order to uh, manage the Kubernetes cluster running on your cloud. Uh, by the way, the Magnum Auto Healer support both master nodes and uh, worker nodes you know, for, for, for the detection and uh, auto healing. Keystone Auth webhook um, is providing authentication and uh, authorization for the clusters, but actually the two feature can be running separately. I think the most significant value the Keystone Auth webhook brings is to simplify the logging process and the resource permission management for the OpenStack users. <clears throat> for example, if you are OpenStack project administrator and uh, you have your 
existing OpenStack users in your project, and you have some Kubernetes clusters uh, running on top of OpenStack, the user management and uh, the resource access management will be uh, very simple by using Keystone Auth webhook. Uh, if configured, the Keystone Auth webhook can create the Kubernetes uh, namespaces uh, automatically for, for the OpenStack project. And uh, also it can do the mapping from the role of OpenStack user to Kubernetes user or group. So it's very convenient. Uh, speaking of authorization, I think a Keystone Auth webhook provide more flexible RBAC policy than the Kubernetes built-in RBAC. As we know that the, the Kubernetes built-in RBAC is whitelist based, which means it's very uh, easy to define the roles such as which user um, can have what can have what operations uh, of what resources. But uh, with Keystone Out webhook, you can define the roles. Uh, for example, a user can access all the resources except for some special ones. So it's uh, more powerful. <clears throat> and the policy change can be <clears throat> made dynamically without restarting the service. The last component I want to cover in my part is Barbican KMS plugin. Well, Barbican is a key manager service in OpenStack. And the Barbican KMS plugin is pretty simple. Uh, it's a KMS, KMS provider that run, running as a gRPC server, which resides on the Kubernetes control plane, but talks to uh, the Barbican service in the cloud um, in order to fetch the key encryption key. And um, using the key encryption key, uh, Kubernetes can manage the data encryption key and the data uh, stored in, in, in the storage. Um, of course, it's most, mo mostly it's ETCD. So uh, the Barbican KMS plugin is just um, responsible for um, receiving or fetching the a secret in Barbican in order to encrypt or decrypt the data for the secret in Kubernetes. And you may notice that I haven't covered the, the, the components in storage area, uh, which I will hand over to Anusha. Okay, Anusha, please go ahead. Thanks, Lingzian. So next component we are going to uh, look at cover is on the CSI drivers. CSI drivers are used for volume management in Kubernetes. So we uh, do hold, provide an OpenStack repo host couple of CSI drivers that we'll be uh, looking in a bit. Uh, before diving in, so let's start, uh, let's give a brief uh, intro on what is CSI and why is it used. So CSI is a container storage interface it is an industry defined standard to expose storage systems to containerized workloads. With the adoption of the CSI, Kubernetes entry volume plugins have been moved to the out of tree and, uh, and also the volume plugins can be containerized. So these plugins can be written without the need to touch the Kubernetes code. With the deprecation of the entry volume plugins, CSI drivers must be used with the Kubernetes for the volume management. This is the high level uh, component diagram that involves in the Kubernetes cluster with the CSI. So we have a CSI driver here at the right hand side. It's a, it which implements the volume plugin behavior uh, and exposes gRPC. Um, uh, exposes gRPC of uh, as defined by the CSI spec, implements the identity service, controller service, and the node service. This CSI driver in turn communicates to the underlying OpenStack uh, Cinder Manila services to uh, give the volume 
volume management in Kubernetes. Coming to the next sidecar containers, these are uh, these are helper containers. Um, these assist the communication between Kubernetes and the CSI driver. So we have uh, we have uh, I think five or six uh, sidecar containers which are optional and can be enabled as as per the requirement. Uh, for node driver registrar, uh, it registers the CSI driver with the kubelet and external provisional provisions and deletes the uh, volumes and external attacher does the attach and detach operations. External snapshotter is for the volume level snapshotting and external resizer with the volume expansion functionalities. So these can be enabled as uh, as required uh, by the uh, driver. The Kubernetes, we have Kubernetes core component here, uh, which uh, has Kube API controller manager kubelet. In this cube controller manager communicates any to the external CSI driver via cube API server. So sidecar containers have to watch the Kubernetes API server for the events uh, and then invoke respective calls on the CSI driver. Uh, coming to the first C uh, CSI driver that is in the CSI. So as you know that Cinder is a uh, OpenStack block storage service. So this uh, CSI compliant driver used uh, used to manage the lifecycle of the Cinder volumes. This plugin is compatible with the CSI spec 1.3.0 and also efforts are being made uh, always uh, for every release to be uh, on the with the latest uh, CSI compatible with the latest CSI spec. The release cycle of the plugin is in sync with the Kubernetes releases, like a recent release Kubernetes 1.22. So we have released the latest version of 1.3.3, which is incompatible with the Kubernetes release. Uh, in the likewise, we also uh, update the sidecars uh, for every release to the latest to their latest versions, and uh, we do share. Uh, uh, we do have the sidecar versions that are supported by the driver in the manifest. Uh, so we do recommend use the same uh, versions to ensure that there is no breakage with the driver. Coming to the driver deployment, uh, uh, there are two types of uh, driver deployment that is supported, one through Helm charts, and also we do provide the sample manifest in the repo that can be used uh, for the easier deployment. A little bit uh, deep dive into the driver de deployment. So uh, here we have uh, CSI driver is commonly deployed as a two sets of plugins. One is controller plugin and other is a node plugin. So controller plugin is uh, deployed as a stateful set or a deployment. Uh, inside this, uh, we have to we have containers of the single plugin. And along with that, uh, the sidecar containers of external provisioner, snapshot, the attacher, resizer, these can be enabled as required. So this needs to be in installed on any node in the cluster. The communication between the sidecars and the plugin happens through gRPC uh, over the UTS socket, Unix remind socket. The next is the node plugin. Uh, inside the daemon set, this uh, this runs on every node. Uh, we have two containers. One is the Cinder CSI plugin, along with the sidecar node driver register. This node driver register uh, registers the driver uh, uh, to the kubelet. So the communication uh, do happen over the gRPC here as well. These are the wide range of features that are supported by the Cinder CSI. So if you would like to explore any of it and uh, would like to know how to use it, so we do have a detailed documentation in the repo, so please, uh, please check it out for it. Uh, this uh, for the users who are still using Intree Cinder Provisioner. So starting from Kubernetes 1.21, uh, 
the flag, the Cinder CSI migration flag uh, is supported as a beta feature and is on by default. So by default, all the plugin operations from the existing entry are redirected to the Cinder CSI. So this is gonna fail if you have if you don't have the Cinder CSI driver installed on your cluster. So if you you need to explicitly disable for it if you don't want to uh, use the Cinder CSI. But uh, this all the plugin entry plugins are targeted for removal on from 1.24. I think maybe target a couple of releases mostly by 1.24. So it is expected that everyone must migrate to the CSI driver instead. We do provide the detailed uh, guide on how to migrate from the using entry uh, Cinder provisioner to the external uh, CSI driver. So uh, you can check it out. The major updates that are uh, contributed to this plugin over the past year. So these uh, we did add generic ephemeral volume support and uh, support for the multiple config files have been added like cloud config can be specified multiple times now. Uh, they will be merged updated uh, I think latest sidecars or every release we do update it to latest sidecar. And uh, there is a uh, we have added support for ignore volume AZ where uh, if you have the cluster with the node AZ and volume AZ as a difference, so this can be enabled to enable the port to be deployed on any of the node availability zones. And several talk improvements, yeah, we, uh, that have been contributed to the repo. Planned for the future, I think for this cycle, the main uh, a focus would be on the CI improvement stability and increased test coverage. Uh, we have been recently migrating to the new uh, to the probe, so uh, we have uh, much work there. And uh, also, there are some plans for uh, adopting the new, implementing or you know, supporting the new CSI features as well. The next CSI driver that is hosted in the repo is the Manila CSI driver. So Manila is the OpenStack uh, shared file system service. As you know, so CSI Manila driver is able to create, expand, snapshot, restore, and mount the OpenStack Manila shares. Currently supported Manila backends are NFS and native CFS. The release, I think latest, uh, have been done in sync with the Kubernetes 1.22, which is uh, point, uh, 9.0, which is compliant with the 1.2.0 CSI spec. Uh, there are several features that are supported, include dynamic provisioning, topology, volume snapshot, and volume online volume expansion. Uh, for this also, the driver deployment through Helm and samples manifest, both are supported. Uh, major updates of this plugin over the past year, um, the expand online, expand volumes in the online mode have been added and injecting metadata to the newly created shares, either through cluster ID or through storage class parameters that has been added. Influence the selection of NFS share export location uh, by specifying desired subnet. And the next, uh, I think, uh, pass mount options specific to CFS, FS CSI. A couple of planned uh, features that are uh, for the future releases that is improve the validation and handling of volume access modes and work on mountable snapshots and also improve selection heuristics for NFS export locations. So that concludes our component overview of all the plugins hosted in the repo. If you would interested or get involved in the project, so there's a getting started guide, which would help you on board into this project. We are uh, actively looking for developers who could contribute or either in the test area, documentation area, or in the plugin enhancements, etc. So you're, you're welcome. So you have a 
uh, code, all the all it is hosted of all the plugins is hosted in this repo, Cloud Provider OpenStack. And uh, for the users, yeah, do erase the feature or bug uh, if you have come across any, uh, if you'd like to report. So, and uh, community, I think Slack channel, we are uh, active on Provider OpenStack channel in the Slack. So feel free to, I have added a couple of contacts as well. So feel free to ping us on the Slack to get to know more about the plugins or contribution, how to start. So we are happy to help. Thanks all uh, for uh, joining the session. Uh, let's open it for Q&A. Thank you.